Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton, and he's going to, go to finish up our discussion on rational functions. So in the last couple of videos, we talked about how to determine the domain of a rational function. We also described the transformations used to graph a rational function from the basic rational functions y equals 1 divided by x, or y equals 1 divided by x squared. We've talked about how to identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes for rational functions. We've determined whether a rational function has an oblique asymptote, and we also talked about how to find the end behavior of a rational function. In this video, we're going to talk about how to analyze the behavior of a graph near the x-intercept, hole in the graph, or vertical asymptote for a rational function, to determine whether a rational function has an oblique asymptote and whether the graph will actually intersect that asymptote, and to graph a rational function with each x-intercept, any holes in the graph, and also horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So graphing rational functions. We've already seen that we can find vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and they are extremely important when you want to graph rational functions. So in general, we're going to use the following guidelines when we graph rational functions. So sketching graphs of rational functions, the first step we're going to do is factor both the numerator and denominator of the rational function, because we know if there's a common factor in both the numerator and denominator, that's going to represent a hole in the graph whenever we cancel the common factor in the numerator and denominator of the rational function. We also know that factoring the denominator of the rational function will help us find out the domain of the rational function and also any vertical asymptotes. Step two, determine the x-intercepts by finding the zeros of the numerator and the y-intercept from the value of the function at x equals zero. So you can find any places where the graph will cross the x-axis or maybe touch the x-axis and turn around by finding out the x-intercepts and also the multiplicities and also find out the y-intercept where the graph might cross the y-axis as long as the y-axis is not a vertical asymptote. Step three, find any vertical asymptotes by determining the zeros of the denominator and then see whether the graph will have the y values increase without bound, so the y values tend towards infinity, or the y values decrease without bound, so the y values tend towards negative infinity, on each side of the vertical asymptote by using test values. So step four, find any horizontal asymptotes, if there are any, using the method of comparing the degrees of the numerator and the denominator, like we talked about in the previous video. In step five, graph the information provided in the first four steps, plot as many additional points as needed to fill in the rest of the graph of the rational function. So whenever we are graphing rational functions, we need to consider also that the graph might cross or intersect a horizontal asymptote. That can happen, so we'll talk about that when we get to the examples. However, keep in mind that you can never cross or touch a vertical asymptote because either the y values will either increase without bound on the left side or the right side of the vertical asymptote, or the y values will decrease without bound on either side of the vertical asymptote. The graph will never intersect or cross a vertical asymptote. And so to determine points, if any, at which the graph of the rational function intersects a horizontal or oblique asymptote, we're going to set the rational function equal to the horizontal or oblique asymptote, and then we'll have to solve the resulting equation. So example five, graphing rational functions. Graph the following rational functions after determining the following characteristics of its graph. So we're going to talk about determining the domain of the rational function, simplifying the rational function to lowest terms if possible, to find any vertical asymptotes or any holes in the graph of the rational function, find the x-intercepts and the y-intercept of the function, analyze the behavior of the graph near each x-intercept and also the behavior of the graph near the vertical asymptotes, find any horizontal or oblique asymptotes and determine points, if any, at which the graph of the rational function intersects the asymptote, and then finally, we're going to provide a sketch of the function with all the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, any additional points that we find, and any vertical and horizontal asymptotes also labeled. So number one, we're going to graph this rational function. f of x is equal to, in the numerator, x subtract one divided by the denominator, x squared subtract four. Notice that you wanna factor both the numerator and denominator completely first, so you can find out if there are any common factors in both the numerator and denominator. Notice that x minus one cannot be factored any further, but x squared subtract four, it does factor further. You have x squared minus four is equal to x squared plus zero x minus four, and so now you're trying to find two numbers that multiply to negative four, and the same two numbers need to add to zero. Well, the two numbers at work are plus two and negative two, so the factors of the denominator are x plus two and x subtract two. However, there are no common factors in both the numerator and denominator, so this function is in lowest terms. So now let's talk about the domain of the rational function. So the domain, the only concern about the rational function is where you have x values that you substitute into the denominator and you result in zero. So if you have x squared minus four, that cannot be zero, the denominator. So that means x plus two times x minus two, those two factors multiplied together cannot be zero. So x plus two cannot be zero and x minus two cannot be zero. So x cannot be equal to negative two and x cannot be equal to positive two. 
So what that means is that the domain of the function f of x is a set of all real numbers except for x equals negative 2 and positive 2. Or using interval notation, it would be negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to 2, union 2 to infinity, each using parentheses. So now notice, because you cannot substitute x equals 2 in and x equals negative 2 into the denominator, that means that you have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So those are the equations for the vertical asymptotes for this function f of x. And there are no holes in the graph for this rational function because there were no common factors in both the numerator and denominator. Now let's talk about finding the intercepts for the function, the x-intercepts and also the y-intercept. So the x-intercept is where you have the y value equal to 0. So you have the entire function f of x equals 0, that means x minus 1 in the numerator, and x squared minus 4 in the denominator, that entire fraction is equal to 0. Well, when is a fraction equal to 0? It's when the numerator is equal to 0. The only way for a fraction to equal 0 is if the numerator of the fraction is 0. And so that means x minus 1 equals 0. And so if you solve that resulting equation, you get x equals 1. That is a real 0 for this rational function. So you have an x-intercept at 1 comma 0. Now the y-intercept. The y-intercept can be found because x equals 0 can be substituted into the function. The only vertical asymptotes were at x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. The only values that you cannot plug into the function are x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So whenever you plug in x equals 0 into your function, you'll have f of 0 is equal to, replace all the x values with zeros in parentheses, the numerator becomes 0 minus 1, and the denominator becomes 0 squared to track 4. So the numerator is negative 1, whereas the denominator is negative 4, and so that simplifies to be positive 1 fourth. So the y-intercept, where the graph will cross the y-axis, is at the point 0 comma 1 fourth, or 0 comma 0 0.25. So now that we found out what the x-intercepts are for the rational function and also the vertical asymptotes for this function, we actually can analyze the behavior of the graph near each x-intercept and vertical asymptote. So let's make a sign chart again. So you have a number line where you have all the x values that are important for this rational function plotted. You have x equals negative 2 plotted, x equals 1, and x equals 2. Well, you have negative 2 and 2 plotted because those are vertical asymptotes. So let's put dashed lines to represent that those are vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and a dashed line for x equals positive 2. However, at x equals 1, that was an x-intercept, so that's not a vertical asymptote. The graph will either cross or touch the x-axis and turn around at x equals 1. So we're going to find out what is the behavior of the graph on either side of the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, on either side of the vertical asymptote at x equals 2, and also what happens at x equals 1. So now we're going to pick test values. Notice that the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2, and the real 0, x equals 1, divide this number line up into four different regions. You have x values less than negative 2, x values between negative 2 and positive 1, x values between 1 and 2, and then x values that are greater than 2. So let's pick test values like x equals negative 3 on the left side of negative 2, x equals 0 between x equals negative 2 and x equals 1, x equals 3 halves or 1.5 whenever the x values are between 1 and 2, and let's choose x equals 3 to be on the right side of x equals 2. So substitute these values into the rational function to find out what is the output value or the y value which will tell us whether the graph is above the x-axis or below the x-axis on each sub-interval. So if you substitute negative 3 into your function, the y-value is negative 4 fifths. So it's a negative value, so that means on the left side of x equals negative 2, you're below the x-axis. So what that means for the behavior of the graph when you get close to the vertical asymptote is that the graph will be below the x-axis. So that means your y-values will decrease without bounds the closer and closer you get to this vertical asymptote, x equals negative 2, because you must be below the x-axis. At x equals 0, we've already actually done this work. Whenever you plug in 0, the y value was positive 1 fourth, the y-intercept. So that means you're now above the x-axis between x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. So again, because you have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, that means on the right side of x equals negative 2, the y values will increase without bound because you must be above the x-axis whenever you're close to x equals negative 2 on the right side of it. So now let's plug in x equals 3 halves into the function. f of 3 halves, if you plug in x equals 3 halves for all your x values, the y value is negative 2 sevenths. So the y value is a negative number, so that means you're now, again, below the x-axis on the right side of x equals 1 and left side of x equals 2. So since you are below the x-axis on the right side of x equals 1, that means you must have crossed the x-axis at x equals 1 because on the left side of x equals 1, you're above the x-axis. But then on the right side of x equals 1, you're below the x-axis. So you must have crossed at x equals 1. So the point 1 comma 0 is an x-intercept, and that's where the graph will cross, the x-axis. However, you also know that x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. On the left side of the vertical asymptote, you're below the x-axis. So that means the y-values decrease without bound as x approaches 2 from the left side.
Whenever you plug x equals 3 into the function, the y value is positive 2 fifths. So the y value is positive, so again, you're now above the x-axis on the right side of x equals 2. So what does this mean with the behavior of the graph on the right side of the vertical asymptote at x equals 2? If you're above the x-axis, the y values are increasing without bound the closer you get to x equals 2 from the right side. So this analyzes the behavior of the graph near each x-intercept and also vertical asymptote. So now let's talk about how to find the horizontal or oblique asymptotes for this rational function and determine any points, if any, at which the graph will actually intersect that asymptote. So the function was f of x equals x minus 1 divided by the quantity x squared minus 4. Notice that this is a proper rational function because the degree of the numerator is 1 and the degree of the denominator polynomial is 2. So your degree is less in the numerator as compared to the degree in the denominator. So that's what's called a proper rational function. And so the horizontal asymptote is going to be the x-axis, which is the equation y equals 0. So the end behavior of the graph, as x approaches infinity, the y values will approach 0. And as x approaches negative infinity, the y values will also approach 0, or the x-axis. And we know the graph will cross the x-axis because we had an x-intercept at 1. So the graph will cross the horizontal asymptote at 1 comma 0. And so now let's put everything together to sketch a graph of this rational function with any x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and any additional points that we found, and the vertical asymptotes, and also the horizontal asymptote we found. So let's talk about the x-intercept first. You have an x-intercept at 1, 0. We had a y-intercept at 0, 1 fourth. We had a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, so represent that as a dashed line. You had a vertical asymptote at x equals positive 2, so represent that with a dashed line. And then you have a horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis, or y equals 0. So again, make sure that that is represented with a dashed line. The dashed lines are not actually part of your rational function's graph. They're just guidelines to help you figure out what's the behavior of the graph near vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptote. So we know that the graph is below the x-axis on the left side of x equals negative 2 from our sign chart, and the y values were decreasing without bound as x approaches negative 2 from the left side. So that means the y values will decrease without bound on the left side of the vertical asymptote. And as you go to the far left end of the graph, as x approaches negative infinity, the y values are approaching 0 because that was the horizontal asymptote. So the graph will get closer and closer to the x-axis as x approaches negative infinity. On the other side of the vertical asymptote, the y values were above the x-axis. So the graph was increasing without bound on the right side of x equals negative 2. So the graph will go up or increase without bound as x gets closer and closer to the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. The graph will come down and it will cross the y-intercept at 0, 1 fourth. It will also cross the x-axis, but also cross the horizontal asymptote at 1, 0, because that's the x-intercept. And then notice that you're below the x-axis on the other side of x equals 1, on the right side of x equals 1, and so the graph will decrease without bound when you get closer and closer to the vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And then on the right side of x equals 2, the graph was above the x-axis, so the y-values are increasing without bound on the right side of x equals positive 2, that vertical asymptote, and then the end behavior, as x approaches positive infinity, the y values are again approaching 0, or the x-axis. So on the right end of your graph, the graph will get closer and closer to the x-axis, or the y value of 0. And so this is the graph of f of x is equal to x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. This rational function has this graph. So let's go through the same steps to graph this rational function in number 2. This time we're going to graph g of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3x in the numerator, and x squared plus x minus 12 all in the denominator. So the first step is to factor both the numerator and denominator so you can figure out are there any common factors in both the numerator and denominator. So notice that the numerator has a 3x in common. That can be factored out as a greatest common factor. So 3x factored out and you'll have an x minus 1 left. The denominator is a trinomial. You have three terms and it's 1x squared. So try to find two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and the same two numbers need to add to positive 1. Well then factors that work are positive 4 and negative 3. So the factors are x plus 4 and x subtract 3. That's the denominator factored. Notice that there are no common factors in common with the numerator and denominator. You have a 3x, but that 3x is not a factor in the denominator, and x minus 1 is not a factor in the denominator either. x plus 4 is not a factor in the numerator, and x minus 3 is also not a factor in the numerator. So this is in lowest terms. There are no common factors in the numerator and denominator. So now let's talk about the domain of the rational function. The domain of the rational function g of x is where you have all the x values except for what makes the denominator 0. So take x squared plus x minus 12. It cannot be equal to 0. And we know that the denominator factors as x plus 4 times the factor x minus 3. That product cannot be 0. So x plus 4 cannot be 0 and x minus 3 cannot be 0. So that means x cannot be negative 4 and x cannot be positive 3. 
If you substitute x equals negative 4 or x equals positive 3 into the function, you'll have 0 in the denominator, which is an undefined output value or undefined y value. So the domain is a set of all real numbers except x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. So using interval notation, it would be negative infinity to negative 4, union, negative 4 to positive 3, union, 3 to infinity, using parentheses. And so since there were no common factors in the numerator and denominator, there are no holes in the graph. However, if you substitute x equals negative 4 or x equals 3 into the denominator, you will get 0. So those are vertical asymptotes. So x equals negative 4 is a vertical asymptote, and x equals positive 3 is also the equation for a vertical asymptote. So now let's talk about the x-intercept and the y-intercept for this rational function. So the x-intercept, you make the y value of 0, which means you take the entire function and make, so you have x squared minus 3x in the numerator, divided by x squared plus x minus 12, that entire rational function is equal to 0, and we know that they will factor this way, 3x times x minus 1 in the numerator, and x plus 4 times the factor x minus 3 in the denominator, and this entire fraction is equal to 0. Well, a fraction is equal to 0 if the numerator is equal to 0. So that means 3 times x times x minus 1 is equal to 0, which means 3x equals 0, or the other factor, x minus 1, equals 0. So 3x equals 0 means x equals 0, or x equals 1 because x minus 1 was equal to 0. So you have two real zeros in this case, x equals 0 and x equals 1. So two x-intercepts, 0 comma 0 and also 1 comma 0. So the graph will either cross the x-axis or touch the x-axis and turn around at each of these two points. Now the y-intercept. The y-intercept is found whenever you make the x value equal to 0. So if you make x equal 0, g of 0 would be take all the x values and make them 0 in parentheses. So the numerator will be 3 times 0 squared minus 3 times 0, so that's 0 in the numerator, and 0 squared plus 0 minus 12 in the denominator, or just negative 12. So 0 divided by negative 12, that's 0. So the y value is 0 whenever the x value is 0. Well, we already knew that. That was the x-intercept, but it's also a y-intercept. So 0 comma 0 is both an x-intercept and a y-intercept in this case. So now that we found out all the vertical asymptotes for this rational function and also the x-intercepts, let's actually make a sign chart. So the number line will have all the x values that are important plotted. So we have x equals negative 4, x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 3. x equals negative 4 was a vertical asymptote. x equals positive 3 was a vertical asymptote. So those are represented with dashed lines. However, x equals 0 and x equals 1, those were x-intercepts. And so since we have four different x values, the number line will be divided up into five different sub-intervals. So let's choose x equals negative 5 as a test value on the left side of x equals negative 4. We'll choose x equals negative 1 between negative 4 and 0. Between 0 and 1, we'll use x equals positive a half. Between 1 and 3, x equals 2. And on the right side of x equals 3, we'll use x equals 4 as a test value. Each of these test values go into the original function g of x to find out what are the y values and most importantly, what's the sign of the y value? If it's a positive y value, the graph is above the x-axis on that subinterval. And if the y value is negative, that means the graph is below the x-axis on that subinterval. So let's plug in negative 5 into the function. So if you plug in negative 5 into the function g, you'll find out the y value is 45 fourths. So that is a positive y value. And so that means the graph is above the x-axis on the left side of x equals negative 4. And so what's important about this is that at x equals negative 4, you have a vertical asymptote. So that means the graph will increase without bound on the left side of x equals negative 4. Now the next test value is negative 1. So plug in negative 1 into your function g. You'll find out the y value is negative a half. So the y value is negative. That means now we're below the x-axis on the right side of x equals negative 4. So since x equals negative 4 is a vertical asymptote, that means that the y values decrease without bound on the right side of the vertical asymptote x equals negative 4. Now the next test value, x equals a half. If you plug 1 half in for all your x values into the function g of x, the y value will be 1 15th, positive 1 15th, or a positive y value. So that means you're now above the x-axis between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So what that means is that you are below the x-axis on the left side of x equals 0, but now you're above the x-axis on the right side of x equals 0. So that means you must have crossed the x-axis at x equals 0, which was the x-intercept and also the y-intercept. So now the test value x equals 2, if you substitute this into the function, g of 2 will give you negative 1, so the y value is negative. So now you're below the x-axis on the right side of x equals 1, and also on the left side of x equals 3. So you were above the x-axis on the left side of x equals 1, but now you're below the x-axis on the right side of x equals 1. You must have crossed the x-axis at x equals 1. So x equals 1 is a real 0, and the graph will cross the x-axis at 1 comma 0.
However, you also know that if you have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 and you're below the x-axis on the left side, the y values will decrease without bound as x approaches 3 from the left. And then the last test value was x equals 4. If this is plugged into the function g of x, you'll find that g of 4 is equal to 9 halves, or 4.5. And so now you're above the x-axis on the right side of x equals 3. And so again, if you have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, and the graph is above the x-axis on the right side, that means the y values will increase without bound as x approaches 3 from the right side. So now that we've determined the behavior of the graph near each x-intercept and also vertical asymptote, let's find out is there a horizontal or oblique asymptote for the graph? And are there also intersection points between your rational function's graph and also the horizontal or oblique asymptote? So the function was g of x is equal to 3x squared, subtract 3x, all divided by x squared plus x subtract 12. Notice that the numerator is a polynomial of degree 2, the highest power of x is 2, and the denominator has a polynomial of degree 2 because the highest power is also 2. So if the degrees are the same, it's an improper rational function, and we can use polynomial long division or we can use the shortcut. If it has the same degree in the numerator and denominator polynomials, the rational function will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. So notice that the leading coefficient of the numerator is 3, and the leading coefficient of the denominator is 1. So the horizontal asymptote will be y equals 3 divided by 1, or just y equals 3. So as x approaches infinity, the y values will approach 3. And as x approaches negative infinity, the y values approach 3. So that tells you the end behavior for your graph of the rational function. So let's put all the pieces together that we've actually found out in terms of this rational function's graph. So we know that there will be an x-intercept and a y-intercept at 0, 0. We know that there is an x-intercept at 1, 0. And we also have some other points that we can plot that we use from the test values with our number line or sign chart. We know that the graph will be above the x-axis on the left side of the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. So x equals negative 4, represent that with a dashed line for your vertical asymptote. And the graph will be above the x-axis, so it looks like the y values will increase without bound on the left side. So the graph will go up on the left side of x equals negative 4. And at the end behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, the y values are getting closer and closer to a horizontal asymptote of y equals 3. So represent the horizontal asymptote with a dashed line as well at y equals 3. Now on the right side of the vertical asymptote x equals negative 4, we know that we were below the x-axis. So the y values decrease without bound on the right side of x equals negative 4. So the graph will go down on the right side of x equals negative 4. The graph will cross the x-axis at 0. So it will cross the x-axis when you get x equals 0, and then it will also cross the x-axis again at x equals 1 because between 0 and 1, you're above the x-axis. Barely, but you are above the x-axis. And then you cross the x-axis at x equals 1, and then you get closer and closer to this vertical asymptote. The graph was below the x-axis on the left side of x equals 3, so represent x equals 3 with a vertical asymptote with a dashed line, and then the graph is going down, or the y values are decreasing without bound on the left side of x equals 3. And then on the right side of x equals 3, the y values were positive, so that means the graph is increasing without bound on the right side of x equals positive 3. So the y values are increasing without bound on the right side of x equals positive 3. And then the end behavior, as x approaches positive infinity, the y values are getting closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 3. So this is a graph of the rational function g of x, which is equal to 3x squared minus 3x in the numerator, divided by the denominator x squared plus x minus 12. So this finishes our video on graphing rational functions. We've analyzed the behavior of the graph near each x-intercept or hole in the graph and also vertical asymptotes for your rational function. We've also talked about how to determine whether a rational function has an oblique asymptote or horizontal asymptote and whether the graph will actually intersect the asymptote. And also to graph a rational function with each x-intercept, any holes in the graph, and any vertical and horizontal asymptotes represented in that graph. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about solving polynomial and rational inequalities.